I thought I was going to give Godsend a really thoroughly positive review. And then it went and ruined it and just had the most ludicrous ending of any film I've ever seen. And it's like the last three minutes were written by somebody who hadn't read the rest of the film. It is terrible. It is diabolical. For the most part, I won't give any spoilers. Just now I won't discuss the ending, but I will, with a spoiler warning at the end of this discussion, mention why it's the worst ending of any film I've seen ever, because it just doesn't make sense with the rest of the film or the message that's in the rest of the film. It's just ridiculous. But the rest of the film is actually really good. This was released in 2004. It's directed by Frank M. Carlo and Nick Hammond, written by Mark Bombach, and it stars... Greg Kinnear and Robert De Niro. We have Cameron Bright as Adam and Adam is actually the second version of Adam because Paul and Jesse lose their son and while they're grieving they meet a character called Richard Wells played by De Niro and he tells them that he can use their son's, their dead son's DNA and clone him. And this is what they do. And, you know, she carries the son, gives birth to him. He grows up. And once he reaches the age that the first Adam died at, strange things start to happen. And I obviously don't want to talk too much about that because that's part of the narrative. But what I will say is that I didn't, predict the reason behind it obviously we get an explanation and with a spoiler warning at the end I will also go into detail about that because the reason why it's happening is the reason why the ending doesn't make any sense they're not connected those two parts of the story don't make sense together but that part of the story on its own I thought worked quite well it wasn't expected everything seemed to make a lot of sense and I thought it was a very well written well thought out narrative with a great pacing we didn't learn anything too quickly there was a lot of suspense in this and I really thoroughly enjoyed it very atmospheric very moving for the most part very well done so do I recommend it it's difficult because I really thoroughly enjoyed it and it was genuinely the last maybe not even the last two minutes it's it just completely ruined it for me because it's like they didn't even know what the film was about. And it's not even open to interpretation. We are told point blank, this is what's happened. This is why it's happened. And then they go and say, well, actually, we'll just throw something else in here instead. Maybe they're trying to be ambiguous. Maybe they're trying to leave it up to us to decide. But I feel like the film is so concrete in the message that it's giving that it doesn't make any sense. So I would recommend you watch it just to tell me what you think of the ending because I want to know if you're as annoyed by it, infuriated by it as I am. There is nothing worse. You know, a bad film with a bad ending, whatever, I don't care, but a great film, a film that I'm so absorbed in and then a terrible ending, it's just the worst feeling ever. And I'd honestly rather the film had been rubbish. I'd rather the film had been boring. Because then the ending I wouldn't have cared about. So yes, please go and watch it. Please suffer the agony of the ending for my sake. So that you can tell me what you think of it. But I just think it's ludicrous. So I will discuss now with huge, huge spoilers. Why the ending is totally ridiculous. So massive spoilers from now. I'm going to ruin all of the big reveals. So we find out that the reason why Adam is acting strangely and he dreams of this boy called Zachary is because Richard, who cloned his DNA, was actually trying to bring his own son, Zachary, back to life. But his son had died in a fire. His son wasn't a very nice boy. But because he died in the fire, his DNA wasn't in a condition where it could be brought to life by itself. It needed to also use some healthy cells. So he combined his son's DNA with the original Adam's DNA and then was somehow, if his plan worked, going to try and kidnap the boy, get the boy back. I don't know. I don't think he thought it through properly, to be honest. But that's why Adam was having these dreams about Zachary, because he had partly the original Adam's DNA and partly this Zachary's DNA. So there's no supernatural element there. It's basically saying if you give somebody somebody else's DNA, 
you inherit part of their, well, their genetic makeup, but also their personality traits and indeed their memories. That's not paranormal. That's science or science fiction. But that's what that's saying. And that's exactly the message the film was giving. And that's why Adam was behaving the way he was behaving, having those dreams. I don't think it's ambiguous. I think the film was giving a very clear message. If you mix DNA to clone somebody, this is what could happen. And I think it's a fascinating concept. And I think the film did a great job of that. And then right at the end, they move into the new house. And literally in the last two minutes, Adam opens this cupboard. And then there's a jump scare and he's pulled into the cupboard. And it's this jacket, this white and red jacket that was described as belonging to Zachary earlier in the film. And then it's like Zachary has like jumped on him and taken control of his body, but that would imply a a literal supernatural element that Zachary wasn't just inside of Adam with his DNA, but he was also in the house as a an entity, a spirit, or whatever you want to look at it as. That's not what the film was about. There's nothing in the film that would suggest that. And it's like that those last two minutes were written by somebody who hadn't read the rest of the film or who hadn't understood the rest of the film. And it's just absolutely insane how they could just decide to make it something else in the last minute. It's like, okay, 90-something minutes of this film is science fiction and thriller, mystery, and then we'll just make the last two minutes a, a paranormal film or a supernatural film and... They kind of didn't understand what they were doing. So I don't understand. I genuinely believe the last two minutes were written by somebody other than whoever wrote the rest of the script, whoever was primarily responsible for the rest of the story, or by somebody who didn't fully understand the message. Or the alternative is that it was a figurative representation of what Adam was feeling and he felt like he was being dragged in as his the DNA in him was changing but that's me really just trying to make excuses for the terrible ending and find a potential reason for it to make sense but it wasn't it doesn't make sense I can't make excuses for a diabolical ending it's horrendous but the rest of the film is good so I don't understand how they could get it so so wrong and just write a completely different film in the last two minutes God send is a great film, but they honestly, genuinely, completely ruined it.